right, guys. At long last, finally, I'm reviewing Canva Docs. Here's the scoop on Canva Docs. What's going on with Canva Docs? Documents, come on. I'm going to compare and contrast with three other things, Google Docs, Notion, and Dropbox Paper, if you haven't heard about it. Uh, and I don't like to make you wait to the end. I don't love them. They're not for me, but I'm going to walk you through the capabilities because maybe they're for you. I love my jam. You might like your jam, and that's fine. Everyone's jam's different, and that's why all the jams are available to different people. I mean, I do a strawberry jam with my PB&J, but maybe you're like a, I don't know, what other types of jams to go with a PB&J? Maybe comment below. But let's talk about Canva documents. I've recorded this video like three times. Uh, this is it. I finally had to consolidate because I was just all over the place. I'm going to talk about what I like and what I don't like with Canva docs. But first, a primer. Let's go over it. When you are here, Canva itself, you log into Canva as one does, and here we are. Uh, obviously, you land on your For You tab, which has all of Canva's promotional, this is what you should do, and then all of your recent designs, and then your folders, which you have, right? Right? Uh, you also have whiteboards, which I've covered before. I've used it once. Uh, presentations, which we know and love. Social media, which is a lot of templates. Videos, which are video print. And well, okay, these are all pretty straightforward. Websites I'll do a review on later, who knows. Um, we're here. So docs are Canva's docs. Um, they're kind of telling you, like, bring the power, add a limited content, which is what I mean, I don't know about that. And then Magic Write, which is one of the things that I do like about docs, even though I know the opinions on AI are pretty split. Um, now, I always recommend browse the template library. Canva doesn't slip on templates. Um, I'm going to make myself smaller because I didn't put any effort into my appearance today. Um, you've got some cool stuff. Project documentations, pricing proposals. There's some neat stuff in here. And since I've already recorded this video, I already have one open. Um, but this is a good idea to like get your, your brain jump started with what do we got over here. But I always think you should use the right tool for the right thing. Thing. So if you already don't know what you need a doc for, then some of this might just feel extra, right? Like you don't actually need it, but maybe you do. Who knows? Maybe this spurs an idea. So I'm going to come back to my For You tab. This is one that I clicked on. This is a Canva template. It's a social media brief. It's pretty cool. It's fine. Um, you've got just a basic text list, some pretty tables. I like this table design. Looks like this is a Canva I actually don't even know how they did this. Edit design. Well, that's funny because they haven't let me reshape the design. We're going to take a peek at this. Well, that's funny. Okay, you're going to see why in a second. Anyway, audience table, all of that good stuff. What you're going to notice, look at this. There's no page breaks. It's long scrolling. There is no page. There are no page breaks. It's just one long scrolling document. This has pros and cons. The pro is that it feels really nimble, it's really cool, you don't have to worry about where your content is page breaking. The con is that there's no table of contents. So the longer this bad boy goes, the harder it is for people to actually see where they're at. Juxtaposed to, this is my own um, Squarespace audit checklist. I do Squarespace audits um, if you're a DIYer and you're somebody that's like, hey, I really want Olivia to do this for me. but. Uh, or I, I really want to do my website myself. I have a template, but I just want a professional to tell me what to do. That's what this is. And I use Google Docs uh, to write a giant checklist out, including some nice blog topics and some sites to look out for. Um, but you can see over here on the left, la, 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 uh, we've got some some clickable, clickable table of contents. This to me, this is king. Why, why would I look at this? This is incredible. Um, you're also going to notice that my Google Docs is also pageless. That's a new feature that they just added under File. Just kidding. File, Page Setup, Pages and Pageless. Pages and Pageless. I like the pageless because it's one nice pretty thing. I might have to change this to pages depending on feedback if people print it, but I mean, I can't imagine. Oh. Well, that ended up fine. Um, I might just format it for both. But anyway, regardless. So Google Docs does the same thing. Ooh, okay, what can, what can you say? Um, back over here to this, let's go over 
docs themselves. So this is a dock. When you start it, you have your basic text editing. That's it. You don't have the paintbrush tool. You don't have anything else. When you hit this plus sign, I'll go over magic right in a second, but you've got heading, subheading, body, table, checklist, bulleted list, numbered list, and then your, your charts and fancy stuff. Embed's going to be for videos. I, I put some videos in. I'm going to show you an example. A timer for some reason. I guess if you're presenting, uh, oh, music. I, I don't know. That's that's not, this isn't us team. Um, we've also got your logos, which I don't understand why you would didn't just add an image and then an emoji. I guess if you just want to add an emoji there, there it is. So, you know, what I like is that this is inside of Canva. I like that, of course, it's got my fonts and my branding already. I love tables. I think the tables all look really beautiful. So I do in general think that this table in particular is gorgeous. Um, the other thing, so I have created a Google Doc. I would never ever um, do a review of something I haven't used myself. So let's go over this one. This is a big one that I shared in my newsletter. Let's go content and social media jumpstart and resources. It's a long one. <sighs> There's no table of contents. So I wrote my own so that people could see but it is, it's not clickable, but I added videos, which is nice, tables, which are nice, um, lists, not really anything groundbreaking. There's lots and lots of tables, which is great. Now you've got a couple of features that I do actually really like. So first you can see there's actual human beings in this file, so I can stalk all of you. Next, when you click on insights, you can see the views. I can see who's viewed this total right so that's pretty cool i've got 77 people 90 views which is nice overview i can also see how many words how long it would take to read it characters excluding spaces even if that matters um engagement like okay what people are clicking which links so this is really nice if you've got some sort of document that you really need to track um what's funny is that this is kind of low for how many resources are in this document and then collaboration, um, if people are commenting, you can see all of that. So the insights in this document are really, really nice. So that's cool. Um, the stats in the document itself, that's what I just said. Magic right, and then I'll cover that in a second. And then you can convert this to a presentation. So I can click convert on my fancy document um, and click get started. Oh, I hope it makes a copy. I would be devastated if it didn't. Surely it would make a copy. And this is what it's making, which is terrible. Like, it doesn't know that this video goes with this slide. It doesn't know, like, it didn't space this table out correctly. Uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna actually take, what, what, what list was that on? Convert to presentation? We're gonna put that on the don't like list. Now what I do like is Magic Right. I am actually pro AI, I know. Come for me with pitchforks in the comments. Please feel free. I get it. I I don't think the AI is going to take our jobs. I think it's still really dumb. And I think it's a great jump start. And I think it's going to alleviate our brains. So um, for Magic Write, you just can use some words to describe what you want to write. So I'm going to do um, why I should integrate my branding into all of my resource documents. Hit enter. And we're going to wait for it. Okay, so integrating your branding, numerous benefits, helps to bring brand recognition. They're right. Increased chances of audience choosing your products. Consistent branding can help to establish your trustworthy. Always edit. You don't know where this AI is coming from. Always, always, always edit. You don't want any plagiarism. Um, I never recommend you writing entire things. I think AI is perfect for jumpstarting brain power. You should never use it exclusively to write content. You should never use it exclusively without editing it because, again, it's pulling from the internet. But it does help me think, oh, yeah, this has put it into a bulleted list, so that feels great. I'm using words like credibility and loyalty. So I would take this and I would rewrite it. And I think that's that's valid. I really, really do. So, you know, come at me with pitchforks for everybody that doesn't really like. And it also has said brand consistency like three times. Recognition consistent branding. Yeah, so it's kind of dumb, but it was helpful to at least get me get some things on here. Okay, that's about it for the things I like about Canva Docs. Let's get into what I don't like. 
they really stripped it. This is Canva. The power of having a document inside of Canva feels like a massive miss to not integrate more of what we know and love about Canva. What I was miffed about with this little design is that when you come in here and you click plus and click design, this is really tricky. Canva has this like pop-up window and it's defaulting to 2000 pixels by 600 pixels. Now, I'm not seeing a way to resize this document, do you guys? I don't see redesign here. So I'm gonna click event proposal here. Favorite things questionnaire, okay, sure. And click save. And that has just inserted itself into my document. So please tell me how they got this objectives and when I click edit design on this one, on this template, why there's a 728 by 90 pixels. Canva, can you help me out here? I'm really tech savvy. I do not see a way to resize. So it's like the custom designs are only available for templates, right? Because I don't want this one. Maybe I want a vertical one. Maybe I want two designs next to each other. This feels like a massive, massive miss in, in general. Where's my shapes? Why can't I put cute, fun shapes all over here? Where's my gifts? Where's my stuff? They really did strip out the capabilities of Canva. You can add elements. You can add this like cool checkerboard. That's it though. I can't put text on top of it, I can't design with it, I can't do anything else other than just plop it on the page. And you're gonna see here, this is also really stripped, I'm not getting a lot of my stuff. I can add a square, but I can't do anything else with it. Big miss, Canva, big miss. Uh, no table of contents or page numbers. Why even, what, what do we even, no, Canva. Uh, additionally, there's really weird sharing and template capability. So if you come over here and click share, you're going to see I can't share this with you guys as a template. There's no template link. The way I've been sharing mine is by just doing um, anyone with the link can view and they can just view it and make a copy. I can download but only as a PDF. It feels not as great. Um, it, like I said, they're really stripping it. It's really weird to add images, so if you're going to notice when I hit this plus sign, I have design, heading, subheading, body, table, no image. So the way you have to add images is you have to first upload your image here, and then you can click, and then you can resize. So it's there, and then you can make it left aligned or right aligned, but you can't move it around the page. So it's there, just not quite intuitive. It took me a minute to go, wait, what? How do I add an image? Um, additionally, it doesn't really link up with much else, right? And when I say link up, I mean, I want my docs to function. When I use uh, my Squarespace over here, I can always um, click at, wait, maybe it's the, no, insert. Okay, that was just being glitchy. If you hit at, look, I can actually add people. I can add smart chips, like a date, a drop down. I can have my own stopwatch on here, I guess. Tasks, some cool variable stuff, meeting notes. Look at this, Canva. Canva also has access to cool things as well. They have a comment feature, so why can't I add people? They have other things. They could have added more custom blocks, so I'm still just not really sure where the capabilities are in terms of linking. Designs are weird inside of it, I already covered that, and then the convert to presentation was really, really bad. That being said, uh, I've walked you through this kind of document that I have. I'm using it, we're trying it out. I have another one, uh, sans serif body copy fonts available in both Squarespace and Canva. So this is a fine one, I might, I'll do the serif counterpart at some point. Um, but overall, I'm just not sure why Canva released something. Now, I love creating things in Canva. This is my pocket SEO workbook, which I'm obsessed with. It's coming real soon, guys. It's like two weeks out. I've decided to make it a workbook video, so it's going to be a, a very lowly priced, um, well, I say lowly, it's going to be what I think is a, a concise price to get a video of me actually applying this to a page. Um, and it's got tables, and it's got screenshot of notes, and it's got cute graphics and it looks beautiful. This is really what I expected Canva docs to look like or just give me page numbers inside of this already. Uh, I don't have page numbers, but I can at least put something together that feels 
a little easier for me to rotate. I can still move these items around. Uh, this is a gorgeous document and there's no reason why they couldn't have just taken this and uh, grown it. Now, some other alternatives, if you're watching this far and you're like, well, Olivia, what do you do? First of all, I really do love Google Docs. I'm a humongous fan. I think they are just so powerful for what they are. Again, you can make checklists and make things look really pretty just by making it full screen and giving it a background color and adding your own fonts in and logos in. This is not my logo. I'm doing this audit for somebody else, obviously. Um, and it's going to be easy and user friendly. People know how to use Google Docs. You can't go wrong with it. You could put it in folders. It's awesome. Um, I also use Google Docs for literally everything. So here are all of my templates that I use for my clients. I've got like a welcome workbook, my brand questionnaire, um, my start here document and their task list. I mean, literally everything I do is within these Google Docs for my clients. Uh, you can see I even, so, oh, Olivia, how did you get the headers in? Uh, I just popped them in. I just designed them in Canva. And if you comment below, I will give you the template link. Um, but I have, I do have Google Doc templates and it's just an image plus my logo, plus here's all the things that I need. Uh, this is perfect. My next recommendation is Notion. I'm really trying to build out my resources and use this as a project management system. I have not succeeded yet because I'm still missing one thing, but uh, Notion also has AI. Uh, you can see I have this gorgeous table and Notion can do just so much more in terms of like databases. You can see here's all the things that Canva has, but also Notion can have Notion. Notion has a cool toggle list, quotes, a divider. There's not even a divider in Canva docs right now. I can link to other pages. I can have cool call-outs. I can have AI write things, image it. Look at this, come on. This is the functionality I expect from my documents in 2023. The last one I wanna tell you guys, if you're still not happy with anything, is that Dropbox actually has a really cool thing called Dropbox Paper, which works really well too. Um, you can see you can add image, uh, video or other media, table, uh, this cool timeline thing, which is really cool. Check this out. You can say like, hey, I want this person to do this this time. It's amazing. Um, so Dropbox, paper.dropbox.com is my other recommendation. So that's your overview with Canva Docs. I think it's fine for the purposes of this video. This is pretty cool. And maybe I could even use Canva Tip Weekly inside of this just to jot down notes. But as a larger system and as a whole, you're better off with something like Google Docs for clients or Notion for databases. Uh, Canva at this point feels like a really fringe need for why you would create a document here. Um, but prove me wrong, right? In the comments, if you do use Canva Docs for something, absolutely run on over and let me know what you use it for uh, and let me know if I'm wrong. All right, guys, uh, who knows what we're doing next week? Um, like I said, I'm using Notion. I've got jot, uh, boop. I've got uh, ideas jotted down here. Um, so let me know what you guys are um, hoping to get answered. Uh, and thanks so much for watching this kind of longer review. It was a little bit chunkier of a thing to tackle. Thanks so much.